I was 16 years old when I left China for the first time to explore what life is really about. I lived in Australia by myself and wanted to do something that I've never done before, something challenging and rewarding. So um, a friend suggested that I could play the violin on the street. And I thought, all right, why not play in front of the Sydney Opera House? There are plenty of tourists. So I got really excited and went there the next morning at 8 o'clock and saw five tourists. So I got a little self-conscious, but still picked up the violin and started playing. The music was echoing the empty space, and I could hear my heart pounding. And in my head, I'm counting, one, two, three, four, five people passed by, and no one even dropped a penny in my case. What was I thinking? Why did I get myself into this? I felt like I was begging for their attention and sympathy. And after 20 minutes of self-inflicted torment, I did earn $2. And believe it or not, these are the first $2 I ever earned in my entire life. It was very self-assuring, and my confidence began to grow. But suddenly, a figure appeared behind me with a booming voice. Oh, I'm sorry, young lady. You can't play here. I turn around and saw this big security guard towering over me. And my mind started racing. I just got good at this. I earned $2 already. I need to figure something out. So I started negotiating with him. Um, could I play at that corner? Or how about that corner? Or how about far away over there? And all I got was a stern, no. So I knelt down and started packing. One more dollar dropped in my violin case, and I looked up. I saw this big crowd that started gathering around me. And, all right, I guess it's time to go. So I spent quite some time just aimlessly walking around Sydney Opera House and scouting for maybe there's this one corner that the security guard won't see me and can start playing again. And I somehow came to this ice cream stand and started a great conversation with this cute German ice cream guy. And uh, I thought, well, not too bad. I've done a lot today. I earned myself an ice cream for the first time. And now I get to talk to this great, cute guy and practice my English for free. He saw my violin case and asked, are you a musician? I got a little embarrassed and told him about my shame for money. I got kicked out. And he asked, uh, why uh, don't you go to uh, Darling Harbor and play over there? There are tons of tourists, and they don't know what to do with their money. <laughs> and, I was, and I told him I thought musicians are not allowed in all tourist areas. And then he said one thing that suddenly opened up my mind. Ding. Why don't you go to give Dolly Harper a try? If you don't try, you never know. It's very true. How do I know I won't be able to do it? And what do I have to lose? My ego? My fear of shame? My comfort of having earned enough money and now settling at this ice cream stand? And somehow, at the moment, I couldn't think too much. I just felt blood rushing through my veins, and I picked up my violin. I thanked the German guy, and I walked myself over to Darling Harbor. And this time, I was confident. I wanted to make enough money to, money to buy at least two ice creams, and one for the German guy, too. And after playing there for 20 more minutes, I got kicked out again. But by then, I've already earned $20. That's $1 a minute. Man, my plays are worth a lot. I can't stop here. Now I've got to go and keep trying. So I rushed over to George Street and took out my violin with a big smile on my face, and I started playing again. And within three minutes, two more security guards came over. And I thought, all right, I guess it's time to wrap up the day. And to my surprise, they both smiled at me and each put down $5 notes. And they even offered to take a picture of me. And here it is. 
On the side picture, that was my soda, and inside that violin case, at the end of the day, there were 90 Australian dollars. <laughs> yes. And just to put into perspective, growing up in China, all I did was study, study, study. I've never done something so outrageous, yet so rewarding. And not only that, I lived out with an ice cream guy who told me, if you don't try, you never know. And that mantra has been weaved in me since I was 16. From that point on, when times get tough and when things go wrong, when I'm feeling stagnant, I always tell myself, Ding, if you don't try, you never know. And that always brings me right back to Darling Harbor. And today, I no longer play the violin on the street, but I have a different audience. People like many of you who are learning or have learned a language in the past. Having gone through the same thing, I understand that the most difficult part of it is speaking up. So earlier this year, I quit my banking job to pursue a vision to transform the way people learn a new language. I named the company Tun Tun Tu Tu, which means hesitant to speak. And our vision is exactly to help you to overcome that fear. And I know that fear is tremendous because even now, I am still practicing my English every day to improve my self-confidence. My co-founders and I are working hard to achieve this vision, and we're still early in the stage. But we won't know until we try, right? Thank you.